Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. My name is Anthony and this is Crypto Ride, the YouTube channel that helps you navigate the ups and downs of the cryptocurrency space through crypto news videos, technical analysis, and crypto project reviews. Today we're going to do something a little bit different than the norm. I guess you could consider it a news video, but it's more of a video that talks big picture about millennials versus baby boomers and the potential transfer of wealth that will be coming to the millennials, which myself, I am a millennial, and I know many of you that watch the channel are also falling into this category. And here are how the five generations are usually identified, and I highlighted the two we're talking about today. We've got the baby boomers, which is the category my parents fall into. We've got the millennials born generally between 1981 and 1996. These are people who are currently between the ages of 23 and 38. And I know majority of you guys who watch my channel are in that age range. Of course, you got Generation Z, which is coming up now, ages 7 to 22. But again, the two we're going to focus on are the baby boomers and the millennials. Now, I was looking at the Litecoin price yesterday, researching the video, and I clicked on a news link. Take a look at this. 43% of American millennials trust cryptocurrency exchanges. And this just came out yesterday. I'll put a link to the description in this article from CoinGape. And here's what I found. America is in a flux. And there's a new survey that showed 43% of millennials are heavily influenced by emerging technology. They trust cryptocurrencies more than the U.S. stock exchange. So I want to talk about this because this is definitely something that resonated with me. Um, for me, when I first started investing in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies roughly about two years ago, I loved it because it felt like mine. It felt like my generation's thing because it was new. So it wasn't so intimidating to get to know. Rewind a couple years earlier when I first started investing in stocks, that was really intimidating for me. But there was something about using the technology, using the, about, using the cold storage, and something about the fact that it was brand new that made me um, unafraid and pretty excited to dive into it. And so if you resonate with that, give the video a like. And let me know in the comment section how you feel if you're a millennial about cryptocurrencies versus the stock market. Do you like cryptos better? And if yes, why? So the survey that was conducted was conducted by eToro, but they did ask a thousand investors about US cryptocurrencies, stock exchanges, and their thoughts on 401ks, confirming the latter's inherent distrust for centralized institutions like banks and now stock exchanges, a mainstay in the US investment circles. So saying that a lot of people who are our age don't really trust centralizations now that we've been uh, exposed to the cryptocurrencies and we've had some sort of an awakening, if you will. All right. And this is something else I want to point about. So $7 trillion to millennials in 10 years. Let me read here a bit. Enjoying a period of prolonged economic prosperity, it is estimated that they will transfer roughly $64 trillion of their wealth to millennials in the next decade through to 2030. During this time, the amount of disposal wealth to millennials will jump to $7 trillion, a boon for cryptocurrencies. So what's going to happen is as these baby boomers retire and inevitably pass on, they are going to leave their wealth to their kids. That's really what's going to happen. And as our generation gets this money, we will have the choice of what we want to do with it and how we want to invest it, how we want to save it and hopefully grow it. And, you know, based on what we're looking at here, 25% of millennials in the U.S. earning 100K or more hold one or more cryptocurrencies in their portfolios. Another 31% are interested in cryptocurrencies as 9% of the American population are Bitcoin holders, according to a study by Blockchain Capital. So 9% of the population currently Bitcoin holders. I know for me, uh, some of my friends talk about it. You know, when I talk to them about cryptocurrency, um, some of them are in it, some of them are not, but some of them have a lot of interest, but they tell me Bitcoin's so expensive. Why would I buy Bitcoin when it's worth seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000? People remember, people don't think about the fact that you can buy Bitcoin in small increments. You know, if you're in cryptocurrency, which you probably are, if you're watching this, you know, you are well aware that you could buy a 10th of a Bitcoin or a 50th of a Bitcoin, but that's not necessarily possible with all the equities that are available through the stock exchange, through stock investing. So it's a different mindset, but if and when this generation inherits 
wealth in large numbers. You know, when you inherit fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, two hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. Well, now all of a sudden you have capital to invest. And if you've been interested in Bitcoin but have been sitting on the sidelines, that could be the perfect time to invest in cryptocurrency. So I think this is really interesting to look at. Why did I bring this video to you today? Um, first of all, I want to step away from the price like I mentioned earlier because it's never exciting to look at price during these moments. But I wanted to give you guys some perspective on the big picture, take a step back, take kind of a macro look. And this is just one kind of theory, if you will, of something that could happen that could be a huge boost for cryptocurrency over time and the whole asset class. Also, if you've been watching the news, there are a lot of other things on the horizon. Like, of course, I made the video about China and their interest in blockchain. You got Facebook's Libra coin potentially on the horizon. And a lot of large scale governments talking about coming out with their own digital currencies. And all these digital currencies are going to increase awareness of Bitcoin and you know, some of these people are going to go down the rabbit hole and they're going to see the decentralization of it all. And potentially they're going to get sucked in and they're going to end up investing in crypto. So I don't think that the central bank digital currencies are a bad idea or that they are a negative thing or that they'll tank the cryptocurrency markets. If you're a millennial like I am, this is definitely something that should be on your radar. But on that note, invest responsibly, enjoy the ride, and I'll see you in the next video.